Hi everyone, I'm Melissa with Midnight Hour Oil. Today I wanted to come out and share with you a dream I was given last night that I believe speaks to just the urgency of the hour, church, the lateness of the hour, where we are at, how close we are to that time when Jesus is going to come and take his bride off of the earth. And I am sure that you, just like me, want to be a part of that company that is taken off of the earth. But we know that there are many who are not ready. All right, so I want to share this dream and then the message I believe the Lord has for us. So in the dream I had last night, I was standing in line. And this line was like running through a large mansion, a large home. I knew that we were in line for roll call. All right. And there were some people in line. They looked like they were from past generations, like the 17, 1800s, asking me about my work here, what I was, this new job I was doing, which I was very familiar with and was happy to talk to them about. But when I woke up from the dream, I felt Holy Spirit remind me of the song, When the Roll is Called Up Yonder. And it's, it's like a, an older uh, Southern gospel type song. And I, I went and listened to it and it's all about the rapture. It's all about the gathering of the body of Christ to be with the Lord. And so I, I thought I needed to do a little more research. I wanted to learn more about what the purpose of a roll call is. And I found this article online and I'm just going to read some excerpts from it. Uh, because I felt like what this man wrote really gave light to what this dream means and what the Father is, is conveying to us through it. All right, this was from taylorstudies.com, written by Glenn. And uh, he writes, he's a, he was a math teacher, and he's talking about how at the beginning of every year, uh, what it was like for the first, on the first day of school, and he said, with the beginning of each new year, school year, I remember the first day of class. I would have 30 new faces, most of them completely new and unknown to me, enter my classroom. I would begin by calling the roll from my attendance sheet. Much to the dismay of my students, I would then place them in alphabetical order. I told them it was to help me learn their names. That was true, but it wasn't the only reason. I, it also helped to separate potential friendly disruptions before they occurred. It was not unusual when I finished the roll call for a student to be left out. That is to say their name was not on my roll. It could have been because they were in the wrong class or perhaps their name just needed to be added to my roll. At any rate, consider their situation. You didn't call my name. My name was not on the roll. The spiritual application is obvious. In a much more serious way, consider God's roll call. Twice in the book of Revelation, reference is made to anyone whose names have not been written in the book of life. Revelation 13, 8 and 20, 15. God's role in the book of life is the ultimate role. That is the one time I don't want my name to be left out. Uh, and then he goes on to say, when that final role is called, there will be no one left off by mistake. There will be no one in the wrong room. There will be no late additions. That is, there will be no rectifying the situation at that point. It will be too late to make changes. I want my name to be written in heaven. Don't you? So, the important thing, church, is that our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. You know, when, when the 70 came back to the Lord and they were really excited that even the demons would submit to them in Jesus' name, he told them not to rejoice that the demons obey them, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. The important thing, church, here is that our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. And that's all that's going to matter on that day when God takes that roll call and when the people who have been serving him and waiting and watching for him are called up. That is not something you want to miss out. I just had a person send me an email telling me in a dream about it was a rapture dream and, and how they were left behind. And they were very sure they were going to go in the rapture. And they watched these people around them going up and, and they weren't taken. And this is the thing that 
I have talked about so many times is just taking an inventory. Each of us need to judge ourselves. We need to look at our lives soberly and ensure that we are following Jesus, uh, that we have truly given him deciding power over our lives as Lord of our lives, that we are walking out a relationship with him each day. Uh, that is the main thing. That's that's what Rhonda was talking about in her dream when she was told to uh, promote orange insurance, okay? Oranges are sun-kissed, and insurance is, uh, by definition, assurance against unforeseen and unfortunate loss. And this is what uh, Rhonda was being told to promote, okay? That people get orange insurance, all right? Oranges are sun-kissed. We need to ensure that our lives have the stamp of the sun on them, okay? They are sun-kissed, sealed by the Holy Spirit. And, and only those who are sealed by the Holy Spirit are going to be taken out of here, all right? We have to have that stamp on our lives. And in Mark 8, 36, it tells us, For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? I can't think of any worse loss than, a, than someone losing their own soul. So the first thing we need to do, church, make sure that we are where we need to be, all right? That we are walking with the Lord, truly yielded to him in a, in a relationship with the Father through the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 10, 9, and 10 tells us, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth you confess and are saved. And we need to make sure that our loved ones, our coworkers, our neighbors, whoever the Lord causes us to cross paths with, that they know the truth, that they know the plan of salvation, you know, that they're not just walking in some thought that just because they prayed a prayer when they were 12 years old, that they're good to go. This relationship with the Lord is not something that can be faked. It is not something that, you know, we can just go through motions and, and then voila, we're good to go. No, we need a yielded, genuine relationship with the Lord Jesus. And that can only come by a heart attitude on our part that's yielded to him, submitted to him. And I encourage you to communicate these things to your loved ones, your coworkers, whoever will listen to you as the Holy Spirit leads you. But that window of opportunity is closing, church. If we are in line right now and roll call is being taken, that window of opportunity is going to be closed very, very soon. So please take this message to the Lord in prayer. Ask him to give you confirmation. And as always, church, it is my prayer that we will all continue to keep our lamps burning bright while we wait for Jesus. I love you all. God bless you.